Hi, welcome again to another episode of Lawson Woods PNW. I'm Lawrence the host. You know, often in my videos and other people that make videos on tiny house living, we only show the glamorous side of things. Today's video is going to be a little bit more about the realities of tiny house living and um, some things that you might want to consider. So this video is going to be titled Buyer Beware. So the reason I say that is a few things that have happened along the way in the purchase of my tiny house and discovering flaws within the tiny house. And hopefully you can do your due diligence and avoid some of these things yourself. When I did find this particular tiny house that I'm currently living in, uh, it was a very exciting time for me. And I had been looking for a tiny house that I could afford that was a little bit larger than the previous tiny house I was in. And I came across uh, this particular house in tinyhouselistings.com. Met with the particular owner, and uh, it was a father-son build. And I felt pretty good about it. I could tell when I looked at it, however, that there were some potential flaws. Uh, I'll give you an example. So, if you look in my videos very close, you can tell that not everything is exactly level. And that is the entire structure. When it was built, it was built in a farmer's field. And it was put up on blocks. The trailer was, I should state. And unfortunately, it is in my opinion that it wasn't level when they were building it. And the reason I say that is when you look at the trim boards and you look at other pieces, things are kind of just a little askew. Not everywhere, but in certain areas. And so it is what it is. I still decided to go through with it. I even called the gentleman out on it. And I told him, I said, you know, it's a beautiful little home, but it's a little cattywampus. And he didn't want to hear that. He said, it's not cattywampus. And I said, well, it is. And let me show you where. So that being said, that was the first clue that maybe this wasn't a you know professional build, which I was aware. But I was also told that the father-son duo, that the father was a contractor and a builder. So I took a leap of faith and I ended up going through with the purchase. So some other things that uh, I found after purchasing the tiny house was right away during the move of the tiny house. It had to be moved approximately, I think it was like 150 miles or so from where it was placed in the farmer's field to bring it all the way here to Shelton, Washington, where it is uh, its forever home now. On the way, the semi-truck that had to come and pull it and move it, just as soon as we got on the main road, the tiny house started listing to one side. It was too heavy, far too heavy. This tiny house only has two axles and that was the main issue right there. So the house was far above the weight capacity for those two axles. And the driver of the semi, the moving company, did not want to go forward. He said, no, it's not safe. We're going to blow a tire. I don't want to be responsible and on and on. And I certainly don't blame that gentleman, but I did convince him to at least give it a try. So before we got on the highway, we pulled over and moved some of the weight from one side of the tiny house to the other. And by weight, I mean the blocks that, you know, the blocks and wood blocks that the tiny house was actually leveled on previously. So we did shift everything to the one side. And that made a slight difference. Enough that the driver felt comfortable enough to at least continue on our commute. It was a little scary, a little daunting. I actually followed behind the entire time of the drive of the semi in the tiny house. And any time we went over a corner, the tiny house would just slightly shift, just slightly. And I don't mean the structure, I just mean the weight balance. And the tires would smoke on one side when we were going around a corner. Talk about nerve-wracking. Honestly, 
at one point um, without constant chants and prayers, I didn't think we were going to make it. I really didn't. I thought for sure there was going to be a wreck. It was going to blow. It was exhausting. But we did make it. And we were able to get it here. And we were able to place it. So that was uh, a blessing. <laughs> for sure. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. So when I got here, the tiny house didn't have power. I was still running on a generator. Oh, that's not true. Whoops. Sorry, we did have power at this point. Uh, so when we first got here, we had power and um, I had a water catchment and pressurized system for my previous micro tiny house. And so I just incorporated that into this. Now, buyer beware again, here we go. So when I first turned on the water to the tiny house, I went through and made sure all the faucets were turned off and that the valves were turned off as well, right? Just to test everything. As soon as I turned on the water and pressurized the house, every single valve started leaking. And I don't mean drips, I mean squirting water out from all directions. <laughs> A little flood in the house, so that was something. And thankfully I turned it off right away. And I realized when I went back and after I cleaned up the mess, I checked each of the valves and found out that they did not put plumber's putty on any of the, <laughs> the connections. And so, yeah, that was my first, uh, I shouldn't say first, but my second reality, like, hmm, this something isn't quite right here. It wasn't quite built up to uh, the way it should be. So there was that. Fast forward again. After I got all that fixed, and I thought, oh, we're good to go now. Fast forward again. Then I discovered a leak in the main connection into the house, in the mains. And because the house is already, as you can see here, has shiplap, I didn't realize that there was a leak that was happening for a good few months before it started showing signs um, in the floor. In the subfloor and then the floor I noticed there was a little bit of rays and a little water and I thought what's going on so anyways found the leak it was in the mains they used PEX plumbing which is it's fine you know it is what it is it's not my favorite personally but that's what was used and that's what's commonly used now in most newer buildings however the rings or the o-rings that go around the PEX plumbing they have to be perfect or they'll fail. And what happened in my case is the ring failed on the main inlet coming in. So needless to say, this isn't a fix that I could do. So I had to hire a plumber. This is my first time having to hire a plumber for this tiny house. First of two times so far. Knock on wood. So after that was fixed, the plumber came in. They did a little modification, some changes to it. And thankfully, I hadn't had problems with that connection for quite some time. About a year or so later, I noticed there was a leak, or water, I should say. I didn't notice it on the inside right away, but I noticed on the outside of the tiny house, and this is in the summertime when it actually wasn't raining here in the Pacific Northwest, and I noticed water trickling down the outside of the house on a dry summer day. Well, it doesn't seem right, right? And so time passed and it wasn't a ton of water at first, but I knew something was wrong. I knew there was a leak somewhere. And I would say, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks passed, maybe a little longer. I was still paying off the tiny house at this point. So I didn't have a lot of extra money to go ahead and hire another plumber right away, unless it was something major. And it was something major. So another leak started showing up on the inside of the tiny house, just kind of rolling down the wall and dripping down. Just a little bit here and a little bit there, but obviously at this point to me, it was something I couldn't ignore anymore. And this happened to be in the bathroom area where I first noticed the leak. So I 
did a little investigation. I took out the one of the panels of the shower stall and was shocked to find it had been leaking for probably at least a year at this point. There was a lot of water. It soaked up all of the insulation. It destroyed part of the wall, the internal wall. It did stay, fortunately, in about, uh, what, I would say, two foot radius, but it started from the ceiling all the way down. So in that whole radius, all the way up, all the way down. What, what am I, Vanna White? <laughs> Over here. Anyways, uh, it was a big leak. And I had to hire a plumber again. Yay, how exciting. Now, in this case, we did find the leak actually came all the way at the top of the ceiling. And that was kind of scary because why is there, why is there water leaking from the ceiling when it's not raining? right? Well, when they built this tiny house, they actually ran the PEX plumbing up and over the ceiling and back down again. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they had a reason, a method. Maybe they didn't have enough PEX plumbing pipe. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is up there where the two lines met, another O-ring failed. And that's what caused it. So again, buyer beware. I had two leaks, two major leaks. I still have repairs to do on some of it. In fact, the uh, subfloor in the kitchen where the first leak is, uh, is going to have to be torn up probably next summer and part of it replaced. It's gonna be expensive. Fortunately, I'm handy and I can fix it myself. But not everybody has those skills. So there's that. So those are two buyer beware stories of this particular tiny house. There's also another one, the electricity. Oh yes. <laughs> so with the electricity, I noticed right away in the kitchen that if I had too many things running at once, and I mean the lights and maybe um, a coffee maker and a microwave or something that takes more power, if they're all running at the same time, boom, lights out in the kitchen. The breaker would flip. And I'm like, oh, that's really odd. And after looking underneath the um, electric panel, I discovered that it was only sitting on one um, breaker for the whole kitchen. And all of the wiring, all five, five or six outlets, I think, are in the kitchen. All of them were running on one line, <laughs> so which isn't necessarily a problem, but there wasn't enough amperage for that. Again, here we go again. Had to call my electrician to come out. My electrician uh, looked over the wiring, and thankfully I hired a great guy who's been pretty helpful. He's since retired, unfortunately. But uh, he was able to go through the electricity and, and the cords and figure everything out. He did a little um, corrections in the actual electric box itself. And then he um, added, we added another breaker. So now, fortunately, I don't have that problem. Now I can run everything, no problem. And since that day about, this is almost two years ago now, I haven't had a problem at all with the electricity or the plumbing. So those have been fixed. But I just want you to be aware that when you're buying somebody else's property or somebody else's project, you don't know what you're getting into. And if you don't have the know-how or the knowledge to look for these things, you might run into a little bit of a disaster like I have. So hmm, my advice to you would be, if you're looking to buy a tiny house, if you're looking to buy a structure that somebody else has built, See if you can bring other people in, like an electrician, like a plumber, maybe a structural engineer, somebody, other people that are experts in those fields, and have them look over the 
the structure and make sure that it's safe and make sure that it uh, is sound, that you're not going to run into these problems. All in told, I had to spend, I would say roughly $1,500 to $2,000 in repairs so far from mistakes that I didn't make. So again, buyer beware. Am I upset about buying the tiny house? No. In fact, I love this house. It's my home. It's where I find peace and serenity. Serenity now! Serenity now! But truly, I love it here. And I'm very blessed to have this house. And fortunately, there are things that I can do to fix it. And I already have. But yeah, um, buyer beware. Make sure you know what you're getting into. And if you don't have the skills or the knowledge or what have you, then hire somebody to overlook it for you and make sure that uh, what you're buying is worth the money and you're not going to run into a disaster like I did. I hope this video has been helpful for you today. And if it has, well, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Here from Lawson Woods, BNW. Ciao for now.